Thank you for joining us for another edition of Behind the Editor's Curtain with Don Corrigan. Each edition focuses on points of interest relating to the environment and the community. And now, here's Don. Okay, we're talking today with John Vogel. John Vogel is the Wildlife Regional Supervisor for the Missouri Department of Conservation. And we're very proud in Missouri with all of our nature centers, and especially here in St. Louis with the Powder Valley Nature Center, which always has a lot of good outdoor events for people to take part in. I'm, I'm interested, John, how many nature centers are there around the state? I've visited a few of them, and they all seem to be great resources for people interested in the outdoors. Sure. Thanks for having me, Don. And as far as nature centers go, uh, we've got four big ones. We've got Powder Valley in St. Louis, and then we've got a nature center in Jefferson City, the Runge Nature Center. We've got a nature center in Kansas City, Burr Oak Woods Nature Center, and then we've got a Springfield Nature Center down in the southwest part of the state in Springfield. Now, are all the nature centers kind of offering the same amenities, or are, are there reasons to visit each one because you have unique characteristics for each nature center? I would definitely encourage folks to visit each one. They, you know, they each give you a good idea of what the state of Missouri has to offer along the lines of natural resources, but but each nature center is um, specialized a little bit for the part of the state that it's in. So you'll find similar programs, but you'll also find different programs and different displays offered at each of the nature, nature centers. Well, we've got a big event coming up, Explore the Outdoor St. Louis, for October 24th here at Powder Valley Nature Center. I'm interested, why do you think people should come out and see what happens that day? You know, they have a, the Conservation Federation of Missouri has a great agenda planned uh, for October 24th to really give anybody that enjoys time in the outdoors a chance to learn about activities. It's not just about hunting and fishing. Uh, there's opportunities for canoeing and kayaking and hiking and bird watching. So it's any any outdoor activity. I think folks are going to find information there about new places to explore in the St. Louis region and in outstate Missouri. Yeah, I noticed one of the things on their morning program is Robert Ribright, who's written a lot about hiking St. Louis, hiking Missouri. How does Missouri? stack up against other states when it comes to nature trails and being able to hike the state you know we uh, you know as far as mileage goes i'm not sure but i know most of our conservation areas around the state as well as our our state parks and and even small county and city parks all have a wide variety of trails and and those trails range from really rugged and remote like the ozark trail to a, a paved type trail that you might find in a city park or one of the greenway trails here in St. Louis that folks could push a stroller down or ride their bike down or um, just take a hike through the woods. I know some of my outdoor environmental journalism students at Webster University have tried to uh, tackle the Katy Trail. What kind of things should they be prepared for if they're going to try to do like a cross state uh, hike or a bike? on the Katy Trail? You know, if they were going to try to tackle the whole Katy Trail, um, I would say they'd want to first be prepared to, to take several days because it's, uh, it's a long trail. And, and actually, I've that's one of the talks on the 24th is is about the, the Katy Trail. And, and I believe it's the 25th anniversary. But I also recently heard that we're expanding the Katy Trail here in the near future um, to get all the way into the Kansas City metro area or closer to it. But to, to get all the way across, plan several days and, and plan some stopover points. Folks can camp along certain sections of the trail, but um, there's also a lot of uh, small towns and communities that the trail travels through, and you could plan your stay at a bed and breakfast or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd also encourage folks to take along you know, extra spare inner tubes and um, plenty of water and supplies because it can be a little bit of a distance in between um, stops and um, you know if you had a flat tire you might have to walk a ways to get it fixed. Sure. I, I, I know that one of the things that they have on the program for October 24th and they have many is canoeing and kayaking uh, sort of brought to you by the Alpine Shop. I know they help people learn how to canoe and kayak at uh, Simpson Lake here in the St. Louis area. 
What about canoeing and kayaking the big rivers like the Mississippi or the Missouri? I know in Roachport they have uh, some r- rental places that allow you to uh, canoe on the Missouri River. How well prepared do you have to be for that? How experienced do you have to be before you get into uh, the big waters? You know, I, I think you would want to definitely have enough experience to know how to handle a canoe to make sure um, you know you can you can steer a canoe in the right direction. You do have things in the big rivers like the the wing dikes that kind of direct the flow of the river, and you wouldn't want to end up um, stuck on one of those or, or going over some pretty high currents over the top of those to where it might flip you over. So having the ability to to direct and steer a canoe. And then, obviously, take the safety precaution of of wearing a life jacket when you're in it. I know a lot of times when people float the smaller Ozark streams, they may have those in the boat, but they may not necessarily necessarily wear them. And I would say if you're mm-hmm. going to hit the big rivers, you would definitely want to have your flotation device on just because of the, the different currents out there in the river. We actually have an annual race now, I think, from Kansas City to St. Louis on the Missouri River in the summer. And I'm amazed at how more and more people get involved in that race. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, it's called the the Missouri River 340, and it, it is like you said. Every year, there's more and more folks getting into it. They have several different uh, classes, whether it's um, you know canoes or kayaks, and then they have a, a solo if you're going by yourself, or they have different teams. and And I'm not sure how many folks you can have in a in a boat, but I know there's you know a lot of folks getting into that some of my coworkers did it this year and and they commented that it was quite the challenge but uh, very rewarding you know to to be able to complete that yeah i'm amazed at how uh, quickly some of them make that trip because that's kind of a little windy river to take on a long trip like that isn't it it is and i heard this year i guess the the winners this year set set a new record i think they finished in 30 some odd hours if i if i believe that's right and mm-hmm. You know, I think they pretty much paddled nonstop. They evidently they have it set up now where there are checkpoints, but you don't even have to stop at the checkpoint. You can just text as you're passing the the checkpoint to let them know you're going past it. Well, another session that they're having at Powder Valley on October 24th for Explorer of the Outdoor St. Louis is fly fishing, and a lot of folks think of fly fishing as a mountain stream activity in Montana where you uh, go for the trout and uh, pristine waters and getting in their your hip boots how does fly fishing in missouri stack up you know missouri has a pretty wide variety we've got our our trout parks or our trout trout streams where you'll you'll see a lot of people using fly fishing equipment to to try to catch trout and and that sort of i think relates to where people go out west and trout fish um, you know, fly fishing and trout fishing have always been kind of tied together. Mm-hmm. But we see a lot of folks, um, you know, I, my office is based out at the Bush Conservation Area in St. Charles County, and, and we'll see a lot of folks fishing the, the lakes out here for bass and, and bluegill and sunfish using fly fishing equipment these days. Uh huh. Yeah, I know Mark Van Patten, who's kind of an expert on fly tying and fly fishing, is going to be there to talk to folks about fly fishing in missouri are the jacks fork and the current river is that really the prime watershed for that i've i've actually canoed with some folks who've uh, done some fly fishing down there i've i've been impressed at how many they catch but they usually tend to to release them sure Um, so is, is that typical of fly fishing in missouri you know i think so those are those rivers are um a little bit more remote and less popular with the the heavy weekend floaters when you compare it to some of the lower stretches of the Merrimack or, or the Black River. And so I, I think people focus on those just because there's not a, a nonstop stream of canoes and, and float tubes and rafts going by, so it gives them a little bit more flexibility to, mm-hmm. to enjoy the sport. Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh, being on the water, I notice another session has to do with Missouri stream teams. How much do state officials rely on volunteers to uh, keep up the environmental integrity of our rivers and to clean up. Why is it important for people to get involved with uh, Missouri stream teams? It's, I would say the, the biggest reason is we can't do it by ourselves and we there's no way we could do it without all those volunteers and especially the volunteers with the stream team. They 
you know, all of them do annual uh, litter pickups and litter collections along their streams. Most of the teams do water quality sampling along the streams, and it gives us an opportunity to to collect all that water quality data from around the state that we just don't have enough staff to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're seeing a lot more what they term citizen science out there. Um, You know, there's Audubon uses a lot of volunteers to collect bird counts, like the Christmas bird count. Mm -hmm. And so those citizen science programs are really important. And and without folks volunteering to help us, we just couldn't get it done. Yeah, I see Mitch Leachman's going to be from Audubon for the program at uh, Powder Valley, and he'll be talking a little bit about birding in Missouri. Yeah, and I think Mitch, I think his, I saw his sessions planned for the outdoors, and my guess is he'll be taking folks on a birding hike there at Powder Valley to see what they can find. Yeah, so it's it's really an action-packed day for people who want to come out and see Powder Valley Nature Center and, and get introduced to all the different outdoor recreational activities you can do in the state. I guess uh, one thing that's on people's mind is how do you get the kids involved? You know, uh, young people seem these days to be fixated on their tablets and their PCs and their video games. Why is it important to uh, get young people out into nature in Missouri? You know, it's, it's really important to get the young folks involved because we need the next generation to step up and help protect and stand up for natural resources and the outdoors. Um, there's you know pollution issues there's development issues and we just need each generation to be able to step up and and try to protect those resources so that future generations have something to enjoy just like we did yeah i guess a lot of people probably go out into the outdoors and into nature to get away from politics but there is kind of a political aspect to this um i guess that people have to lobby um, or become good constituents for nature and the outdoors. Otherwise, uh, the legislature um, it's, is not going to make it a priority. Um, so that, that's probably another reason to get young people involved, isn't it? I, I believe so. I think it is. You raise a good point with that. You know, folks have to be active. And, and you're right, people try to, try to escape, um, but unless we stay active in it, there's going to be fewer and fewer places for us to to get out and escape too. Yeah. Well, there's really going to be a full day on October 24th, starting from 11 a.m. and and going till 4. And then I see that there's going to be a banquet with some pretty impressive speakers like Peter Raven from the Missouri Botanical Garden. And uh, the Wildlife Federation is going to have a couple people there. So if people want to go to that, uh, there is a, 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 a fee of a hundred dollars but that also includes a year of uh, membership with the conservation federation of missouri and how important are those kinds of organizations like the national wildlife federation or audubon or sierra to what you do you know they're they're really important partners for us um you know we partner on different projects we work with audubon folks to bring um they have a a backyard wildlife program that we work with Mitch Leachman and his group here in St. Louis and we provide them with some funding and some technical support from some of our biologists and they actually they'll go out and and meet with folks in a suburban or an urban environment Mm -hmm. and give them ideas about how they can improve their backyards or or even their front yards for wildlife and you know pollinators are are a big thing these days and so you know, trying to, to use more native plants and improve their their yards to provide wildlife habitat. You know, a big chunk of, of Missouri and other states are in private ownership. Mm-hmm. And without those sort of non-governmental organizations like Audubon and National Wildlife Federation out there, you know, standing up for natural resources and, and private lands and things like that, sure. you know, we couldn't get it done. The banquet fee includes a your membership with the, the Conservation Federation of Missouri, and, and they support your efforts as well, don't they? They do, yeah. We partner really closely with the Conservation Federation of Missouri. They have a, a huge membership of citizens across the state that love the outdoors, and it's it's anything from hunting and fishing to hiking and paddling. It's sort of the same, the same list of talks that we're going to see on the 24th. The Conservation Federation folks have committees that help support those activities throughout the state and try to help lobby 
the legislators to to kind of protect those activities because they're important to that group and they want to make sure that Missouri citizens have the ability to get out there and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, well, John Vogel with Missouri Department of Conservation, we appreciate your uh, visiting with us. And will we see you at Explore the Outdoors St. Louis at Powder Valley on October 24th? You will. I will actually be there talking in an afternoon session about hunting opportunities in the St. Louis region and sharing sharing some places where people can get out and, and hunt different animals out there that you might find in the Missouri outdoors. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you, Don. Have a good day. Okay, we'll see you out there. This is Don Corrigan with Environmental Echo. Until next time, have a good green day.